TV computer land. We're so glad you're here with us this morning and we're doing something different for our month of December. Our opening song is going to be a couple of carols. So this week, we're starting with Deck the Halls, which we have beautifully done, our beautiful tree back there. And then we're gonna follow that up with the first Noel. So here we go, sing along as loud as you want to at home. No one, no one to spray on, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> the Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful San Clemente. So happy that you joined us this morning. I woke up this morning and my first thought was gratitude. Thankful for technology, and that's a biggie for me because I'm usually not real thankful for it because I have issues, but I'm thankful that we get to connect with each other through technology. We can't connect through being here together, but I know that you're there and I love you and I know that you love us. So welcome to our center this morning and to our wonderful service. So we're going to start this morning like we start every Sunday morning with the flames of faith. And we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence that we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. 
We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of action, knowledge, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Rick Dale lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Thank you, thank you, Rick. Please join me in affirmative prayer. We come together in consciousness. We come together in love. We come together knowing that there truly is only one because it's all God. All of it is God. All the beauty, the intelligence, the love, the vitality, the understanding, everything is God. And I know that each and every one of us is an expression of all these qualities of spirit. As Rumi said, we are not a drop in the ocean. We are the entire ocean in a drop. We are the entire essence and the entire energy of God in individualized expressions of each one of us. We are the joy, we are the compassion, we are the light. So this morning I affirm and I decree that all is well and that each one of us wakes up. We come out of our trance, we come out of our sleep and we wake up to that essence of truth and that truth is that we are the divine in expression we are the compassion we are the understanding we are the ones that express the love of God so I know that we are awake alive and aware this morning and that each one of us is filled with the zest and the enthusiasm and the joy of this holiday spirit, this holiday season and spirit. We are filled with that spirit. We are filled with that light. And so I place my words into divine mind, knowing that this service unfolds absolutely in divine right order. And that each one of us gleans the wisdom from Dr. Heather's talk this morning, from the beautiful music, from the wonderful meditation, from each and every aspect of this morning's service. And so I fill my heart with gratitude, grateful to be here, grateful that we are together, grateful for this teaching, grateful for the love that's in my heart. I have not placed this word into that medium of love and I anchor this prayer in that love in that confidence 
and in that joy, as we say together, and so it is. And now our affirmation for today. On this day of Advent, I create space between my thoughts and I let my heart lead. I affirm the peace of God as my welcomed companion. And now our Declaration of Principles. Let's say it together with all that feeling. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit, spirit operates upon the law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Judy. We're going to have our meditation, and we're starting our meditation this month with an Allendale chant with spirit. So we'll let them start, and then it'll be a very short meditation that I'll lead you in. This morning, we are going to get silent inside. We're going to allow that divine presence to speak to us in the silence. So I invite you to get comfortable. Breathe in and out. Let go of any tension and then listen. At the end of our time, we will hear three chimes, 
and that will signify the end of our meditation. Bring yourself gently back into this present moment. Make a mental note of anything you heard inside your mind during that silence. And now Allendale has a special treat for us. Hmm. This is a song that Rick wrote and it's 
And let's just maintain that, that sacred space. And if you want, I invite you to close your eyes at home and, and listen to the words. this morning is a quality of spirit, peace, and it is, this is the second Sunday in Advent. I was telling my, um, my group, I, I do a, a telephone call Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I was talking to them about doing this, and one woman said, oh, is that the, is Advent when you get chocolates every day? And I know for some people that is what the, the little calendars that you get a chocolate every day that you press out. I vaguely remember having one of those, and I think my mom would have been right, because all of us had a sweet tooth, so that 
those candies were probably gone by day one, and <laughs> never mind waiting till Christmas Day. It is a countdown to Christmas, and the whole idea, the whole idea now is for us to prepare ourselves to get ready to give birth to the highest possible idea that we could have, the Christ idea. That's what Christmas is for us. So to get ready for that idea and to practice every day. So last week, the practice was all on hope and faith and practicing, uh, paying attention to what your desires were, um, what, what, um, what your longings were, and what you have faith in, what you believe, what you know for certain is going to be so. And, and this week, it's all about peace, and if you pay attention, you'll see that there'll be some other things set out from the center that will have messages about peace, and all of it is related to preparing for Christmas. So peace is one of my uh, favorite qualities, and one of the reasons we did the meditation we did is that I've read recently that the way to peace is through stillness. We have to stop the busyness. And, you know, normally we're so busy, rushing out, doing things. And now in California, starting tonight at midnight or 10 o'clock, I guess, we're on lockdown again, which means very, there'll be very little hustle and bustle. There'll be very little running off to do shopping and things like that, uh, especially for those of us that the state of California considers elderly, which is 65 and above. I think there's a whole lot of us that age, but anyway, that we're supposed to just shelter in place and um, give, give the, the hospitals a, ch a chance to uh, get some space. And so I know it's for a good reason. It doesn't mean that I don't have, doesn't take practice to get used to it. We've been doing it now for 10 months, it feels like, nine months. Are we giving birth to something yet? So we've been, we've been, we've been doing it for a long time and we've been learning as we go. And I think we're getting better at it, getting better um, at acceptance and, and peace of mind. The serenity prayer says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And boy, I'm in need of the serenity prayer right here, right now. And when I practice it, when I change what I can change. And I think many people are in the same um, same spot, whether with family or health or how do we do holidays this new normal way, that there are things we can change. There are things we can't change. We can't change, um, we can't change this pandemic, although we can flatten the curve here, but we can't change it. We can't just say it doesn't exist. And it isn't just here in the United States. Of course, it is a pandemic, meaning it's all around the globe. My, my, um, my sisters and brothers in Canada are very much affected by it too. One of my sisters is a teacher, and she teaches in a very small school where there are only eight people on staff. So it's a tiny little elementary school, and it would have been perfect other than the pandemic, because the pandemic means there are no substitute teachers because no one wants to, no one wants to go to some place they haven't been before. There are no substitute teachers if they happen to need time time off, and there's um, if 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 any of them have children, and one of her colleagues does have young children, if they get sick. He needs to look after his children. I mean, so it's a, and the principal said, no, your first job is right here in this school with your students. So it's a, a conundrum. 
and it's the thing that can't be changed, there are probably solutions. In fact, I know there are solutions, but the fact that this pandemic is um, affecting so many people in so many places in so many ways is a fact. And the fact that um, there's what, 13% capacity in our, in, our, uh, in our hospitals for new patients. And that is, that's just a fact, it's statistics. So those are the things we can change by doing our work, but they don't, aren't changing by us resisting them. So there's one of the, one of the things about peace is accepting what is, not lying about it, not <sighs> wishing, well, we might be wishing it, it weren't so, but being willing that that is what it is. What it is, is what it is. And, um, and when we can do that, it's amazing what will occur. I have something I want to read to you in a moment, so let me get it ready. Um, except, I don't know when, but our new spiritual leader, uh, Dr. Edward Villun, comes from South Africa, so in addition to being a brilliant um, educator and speaker, of course he has this wonderful accent, but he has a lot of traditions that um, could be old-fashioned. And one of the things, he started singing this hymn, and he said, we all know it. Well, I didn't know it, but now I do know it. And I want to share a little bit about it with you. And the story is, it began in 1873. <sighs> a mom, Anna, and her, was taking her four daughters, 11-year-old, 11-year-old, 9-year-old, 5-year-old, and 2-year-old, to France for the holidays. They were going to get there for Christmas. They were sailing over to France. They were going to get there. The, the city of lights, they were going to enjoy the beauty and scenery and, and um, their, the husband was going to join later. He was um, held up because of his business, but he was going to come join them and, and uh, share the holidays with them. And on November 22nd, Anna put her four daughters to bed, tucked them to bed after having prayers with them at two o'clock in the morning there was a great crash and they had collided, their ship had collided with, with a freighter. And um, she got the girls up onto the deck and the people were trying to get into lifeboats. I guess it was a quite, quite uh, there was quite a lot of um, chaos. And so she, she lost track of her, the two older girls, but she had each of the little ones in her, one in each hand, one in an arm, one in a, with a hand, and a huge wave came and washed them overboard. And she held onto those little hands for as long as she could. And then the, the five-year-old was, she was slipped away, and then the two-year-old, and she remembered seeing her get smaller and smaller and smaller the last thing she remembered. She was found the next day on a plank with some other debris, Anna. None of the children were found. And taken to England, or well, taken to Wales. Um, I guess that was the nearest where they were. And um, she, she was heartbroken, of course. Her whole family, all of her beloved children, had been lost. And they, it was supposed to be a happy time. They were going to celebrate and sing carols and dance and have, a, have parties and food and all sorts of great things. And something spoke to her. Because she, she said, I might as well just jump in with them. And she heard, there's more for you to do here. There's more for you to do here. 
And she telegraphed her husband saying, only I survive, what shall I do? And he immediately booked to go and join her. And he, of course, so that the captain of the ship he was sailing on know what had occurred. And sometime in the middle of the night, when a couple of days out to sea, there was a knock at his door and the captain uh, was there and said, this is, this is, you want to come out uh, to, the deck, to the deck. This is approximately where the collision would have occurred. And he went out and, and he did not look down. He looked up. He said, they are not there. They are not under the sea. It was a stormy sea. He said, I know that my faith will serve me. And a couple of lines of this hymn came to him. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And then the chorus just is, it is well, it is well with my soul. He and Anna went on to have three more children, their little boy, um, only boy that they had, um, passed away at three years old with scarlet fever. I think we've forgotten how it used to be for people. Children didn't all survive. Um, anyway, and she, uh, Anna and Horatio, the, her husband, who wrote the poem and wrote the hymn, moved to a place near Bethlehem. And there, one of the first things that occurred was uh, a, a woman had given birth, a Bedouin woman had given birth, and her husband said, I can't look after this child. And so um, Anna's daughter, who is now a young woman, said, we'll, we'll look after him. And within a week, there were two more babies that needed to be needed homes. And it was the beginning of an orphanage right there, the Spafford Child Care. So indeed, um, and Anna and her daughters uh, ran it for years because her husband, Horatio, passed eight years after the, the, um, the accident. So he was not there for the long term of the orphanage, but in fact, Spirit, whoever, whatever, whatever the voice was that Anna heard, it was so true. God, life, had need of her. There were children that needed her, and those children she was going to find in her future. So, I know that's a very, it's a very, um, when I when I heard it, I was in tears for the whole thing. It was like. This is too painful. But the ending is so good. It is so good because something really good, and it's not like those little lives weren't important. Of course they were important. Of course, every life is important. But his Horatio's faith, both of them, knowing that there was more for them to do, and to do it with faith, Remember he said, not just when my faith is attending, in other words, not when I'm full of faith, but also when sorrows are rolling like the sea. Thou hast taught me to remember all is well with my soul. And when all is well with our soul, when we know and know that we know that all is well with our soul, we are in that place of deep peace that Rick and Karen just sang about. We're in that place of infinite love, deep peace, peace, the peace that passes understanding. And how can we get there this week? How can we practice being at peace? Well, 
bring the serenity prayer to mind. Bring to mind that you're being asked to accept what you cannot change and change what you can. And to wisely know the difference. To wisely know the difference. I know that there are people out there that have addicted people in their lives. And it's one of the things that people in the program here continuously have told me, you can't change someone else. You cannot change an alcoholic, an addict, unless they want to change, you can be there to support them and love them. But without them wanting to, then you can do nothing. So that's where, ah, accept the things you cannot change, change the things you can. Wisdom to know the difference. So the first thing we remember this week is our souls have never been damaged by our sorrows, by our fears, by our um, angers, by our, the stuff that's going on in our lives. Our souls are pure consciousness, pure consciousness, absolute beauty, clarity, life, the inner aspect of each one of us, that which hasn't been uh, marred by any disappointments or regrets or, um, or sorrow, that part is free. It's perfect. And that's the soul. That's the soul when we talk about it this way. So how can you create peace this week? Well, there, there are some things to do. First of all, turn off some things. Turn off some things. Turn off your computer, turn off your TV. Sit in the quiet or walk in the quiet. I've been walking with podcasts and I've really been enjoying them, but what I'm realizing is that I'm missing the silence of those walks, the connection with nature. I'm still seeing it, I think, but I'm concentrating on what I'm listening to. And they're very enjoyable podcasts. And this week I'm practicing deep peace. I'm going to turn off a few things. I'm going to, um, I'm going to turn on the awareness of God's grace. One of the, one of the things I discovered is there's an Advent, uh, there are two Advent calendars that are musical. So every day you get to play a little piece of music and it's classical music, which is not what I know. Um, but it's great to have this just little three to five minute reminder of Christmas coming, of the beauty of Christmas. So you can get that on your, in, in the app store, um, which I do in the morning or at night or both. Think about the, think about the, um, about nature and think about the mother bird that will sit on her nest even if there's a fire around her. She'll sit on that nest and, and until those, because those babies, those eggs are going to be her babies. And they found, they found mother owls in, in forests dead from forest fires because they would not leave the nest. The nest was their safe place, and definitely the safe place for their young. So, what is your safe place? And you can bring that peace to any place at all. If Horatio, if Horatio um, and Anna could bring peace to the terrible tragedy of losing their whole family and then losing uh, an, another child later on, if they can bring peace and 
continue to, um, to parent, to raise children, other people's children and their own, we, we can get through this lockdown. We can get through whatever is going on in our homes. We can get, continue on. As far as I know, we've been safe with the fires, but I know they've been close uh, for some of you. And, and no one who isn't, no one else can quite imagine how it would feel to suddenly have to evacuate and then your everything is gone. Your house is gone. Everything that you weren't able to carry with you is gone. Mary Morrissey tells the story of, uh, watching, of watching a newscast and, and the news person was uh, talking to uh, various people and these things that could have been in, in um, the fire in Santa Rosa where, where houses were just gone. I mean, they were burned right to nothing. And he, this uh, reporter was walking through and t chatting with people. And the first person that he was chatting with said, we're devastated, everything's gone, everything's gone. We have nothing left. And then a little ways away, there was another couple also. Their house was gone. They said, but we're fine. The kids are fine. The pets are fine. We have each other. So it was ex exactly the same thing. But they saw that the meaningful, the meaningful thing was their relationships with each other and with those that they loved, not their, um, what, not their home, not the things they owned, but the relationship. So it's an opportunity to perceive correctly too. What is it that is most valuable to you? What is it that you really wouldn't, couldn't live without. And you know the answer is going to be a person, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be something intangible, it's not going to be a thing. Because those things, even if they're priceless, can be replaced with something else. Even those things, I wear my mom's ring, but I do it to remind me of all of her years of giving and loving and, and making mistakes and being stubborn and all of her years of just being Leela. I wear it, but this ring isn't Leela. And if I happen to lose it, I would, I still have my memories of my mom, they're irreplaceable. The love that we share is irreplaceable. That's the thing. So for me, breathing deeply, exhaling the stuff that no longer serves me, letting go of it, and then in the silence, listening. Listening like Anna Spafford did to that small voice of God that said, you have more to do. You are needed here. So listen to that small voice within you. I know this is going to be a different Christmas for those of us in Southern California, in, in California, We're good, it's going to be different. But I'm declaring is going to be significant, meaningful, and lovely for each and every one of us. If we want it to be so, it will be, and so it is. And so it is. And I will pray, I will pray now. In this holy moment of right now, 
I recognize and know that the truth is that there is only one, and that one that is God is good and good only. It is the thing that is beating my heart, that is breathing my breath, that it is the, it is the wholeness that I am, everywhere present. It is life itself, and right here, right now, I speak my word for everyone in the first person. And this is what I know is true. I know it is true. I know that as this week unfolds, each one of us, because I am, I know I embrace peace to a greater degree than ever before. I truly let peace enter my heart so that this season of peace and goodwill toward men, all men, can flourish in my heart, in my home, in this center. I know that this is a moment that I can change my mind, the most powerful tool I have. I can change my mind about what is hard and what is awful, and I can neutralize them and say, they are interesting. I have an interesting life. I have a good life. I'm blessed with my friends and family. I'm blessed with my health and my prosperity. I'm blessed with a consciousness of love that permeates and penetrates every atom of my being. I'm blessed by the consciousness that surrounds and indwells. And knowing that I am blessed, I declare that I live in a peaceful universe, and it all begins with me. I'm so grateful that it is so. I simply release this word to the action and activity of divine mind. It is enough. It is done. And so it is. And now, Allendale. that can bring us peace is the acceptance and the embodiment of, of the impermanence of life. And so no matter what we're going through, this too shall pass. And this song says it all.
I want to take a moment of gratitude. Um, so, first of all, this beautiful tree, this is a live tree. It's beautiful. Karen Meyer decorated it. I'm so grateful for Karen. Thank you, Karen. She's done that many times, but um, this was, um, I wasn't even here. Um, Hans helped her help get it, but I think she probably did it all herself, and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So thank you, Karen and Hans, and anyone else that is behind the scenes for that. Um, thank you for um, the people who were in service on the uh, virtually, um, Pam, Pam Rock and Julie, if Julie is there, doing the commentary, which is important. And um, today's practitioners are Cheryl Lyman, Marlene Cutler, and, oops, I had it written down, and another wonderful person. Oh, Jill Burnett, it is a wonderful person, and Jill Burnett. So drop in, get a prayer. Uh, you can come to Coffee and Conversations, or you can just go to the prayer uh, Zoom link and you'll get right there. I'd like to cat. We have a very small uh, in-house uh, uh, team this morning, and it's wonderful. So I'd like to thank, first of all, Reverend Judy for what she always does and so well, and so grateful for you. And I think you know where it's trying to get your picture. But anyway, <laughs> my mask. <laughs> and then uh, Rick Dale and Karen Allen, Allen Dale, who did both our song leading and those two wonderful solos, um, I guess duets, <laughs> those two wonderful duets. David Page, our drummer, Bill Dixon, our uh, bass player, Ed Cusby, our guitar, guitar and Diane King who was who was singing for the um, the sing-alongs, and I heard her do some harmonies with the chant, too, but she didn't do it this time. We are so blessed to have you. Then at the back we have Josh Schreiber in sound, and on camera we have Wardwar. And we are so grateful for this wonderful team of people. And for you, showing up every Sunday, I know it's been... I'm so grateful for you. Do we have a number for the how much we've brought in for the uh, over four thousand dollars came in for the sound equipment for the fat three? Wow, 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 wow! Thank you, all of you generous people. And I know that there was another fundraiser for uh, for Giving Tuesday, and thank you to the people who did that too. <sighs> Life is good. Um, okay, so I don't have any other announcements that I know of. Let's go to our closing. Oh, we'll, go, we'll do our money. Let's, <laughs> let's take, give you an opportunity to give. Um, you can text to give. You can, you can go to our website. You can um, do PayPal or you can send a check here. You can bring cash. Whatever you, however you want to give, it's gratefully received. Gratefully, gratefully, gratefully received. And uh, let's say our prosperity affirmation together. <sighs> my offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Divine Mind, for that supply and for our new equipment. That will be so much fun to see what we get and what a difference it makes. Uh, let's, we've got a wonderful closing song. It's a peace song, and it is so beautiful. Judy and I know it because for years we went to a luncheon, and they sang, they sang this around the tables, and it's the very last song that they sang at that luncheon. So it's a, it's a wonderful song. I know you'll learn it if you don't know it now, and you're going to love it. It's called Peace, Peace, Peace.
the beautiful, peace on earth, goodwill to men, and so it is.